Hey, it's that time of year when the freshest foods are starting to pop up out of the ground and winding up in your local market. Well, today, I want to help you navigate the outdoor food shopping season with my five strategies and 11 benefits of shopping at the farmer's market today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. There it is. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. Uh, This is the weekly show for the methods, techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, extra necky, Now, same wall, but (laughs) in a different place. If you're looking for any of the past videos, go to my archive on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. And if you want to see what I'm cooking when we're not together, go to Instagram as well, instagram.com slash chef.toddmore. Gambas al aijo, garlic shrimp from Spain. It was awesome. I tell you how to do it at Instagram. How do I do it? How do you do it? How do anybody do it? that wants to do it right, well, you create your own recipes. Don't bother for what writers are saying. Uh, What happens is you bring your friends and family together. You wind up learning every time you cook. Uh, You create your own cooking style because you wind up practicing pro methods and ultimately loving your cooking. And that's what what makes you a carefree cook. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, the new office, looks like the old office, because it also has a white wall that I can put stuff on. But we're we're neckier here, and this year, certainly more so for me, more than downtown Baltimore. Now, granted, there was a great uh, uh, farmer's market, real big one, under the highway. Eh, it's a little different culture than being out here on the northern neck, where there's a farm stand about every 10 feet. So I'm excited about our farmer's market uh, season, and wherever you are, I know people say, oh, I'm not near a farmer's market and so on. There's got to be some way for you to get in touch with local and fresh food, even if you start planting it yourself. But I'm not going to get into that because I'm not a gardening certified educator, <laughs> right? But your local marketing is, market is opening soon and now's the time to start checking it out. You start to think about adjusting your buying habits from uh, the fall, from the winter, even the things that you bought and how you bought them. Because Now is the time where you're going to need the freshest foods for your health, for your wellness. We're all trying to stay as healthy as possible, right? And now is the time that you should probably be shopping outdoors as much as possible. Outdoor farmer's market is going to help you as well. And now is also the time to support the people around you. The people that are working hard to grow your food, it's a really, really hard job. So now becomes the time to get a strategy together for farmer's market shopping so you can enjoy all the benefits of getting your food there. Because let's be honest, the world is in a massive state of change. Global, national, regional food commerce has changed and may never be the same. So people are starting to look to their own areas, to their own neighborhoods, even their own backyards to assure that the food they're eating is the safest and the freshest. We're going to dive into that today, but first I've got a true or false for you here. Uh, Tell me, is this uh, uh, statement food true or food false? Tell me in the comment section below. Peaches continue to ripen after they're picked. True or false? I'm going to tell you at the very end. 
Okay, so look, I get a little nutty about <laughs> farmer's market season. I admit it, I get really excited. I get really worked up when I can get back to eating from as close to my home as possible. That, that's what I try and do. And my recent move to the northern neck of Virginia is going to leapfrog me on this. But even when I was in the downtown urban area, I found a way to do this. And now in this area, hopefully in your area, the stuff that was planted weeks ago is gonna be the inspiration for some fantastic original dish as soon as it pops out of the ground and I go get it from the farmer, right? Because to me, the farmer's market is, is like new paints. It's like new strings. You, you know, if you're a guitarist or a painter, it, it's just, it's like new air being put into my cooking. And that's why I love it so much. And if you love the freshest local food, if you love cooking with ingredients that have the best flavor, no doubt about it, then there's no reason left to start avoiding the farmer's market. You know, maybe you don't go there, but now I can put this in your head. So don't avoid it because I've got five strategies and 11 benefits of shopping at the farm farmer's market that will get you as excited as I am in the coming season. Well, maybe not excited. I'm, I'm a very excitable boy. So let me give you my first tip. Ter tip number one is go command, co go commando. No, no, no. Bring, <laughs> bring your underwear with you. Don't leave your underwear at home. What I mean by this is go listless. It's commando shopping, right? You go to the grocery store, you wind up with a list. But when you go to the farmer's market, you have to create meals from what you find there. A list is no good when the farmers tell you what it is to buy, not the grocery store tells you what to buy. Of course, the grocery store wants to sell what sells. The farmer wants to sell what grows. We'll, we'll get into that later. Talk to the farmers, even if you're shy. Hey man, how you doing? Is this from your farm? Do you work with it? I don't know. It's a nice social activity. And plus, it's the farmers that know what's freshest. It's the farmers that know how to use it. Seriously, you grow eight acres of eggplant, you've got to have a good eggplant idea for eggplant. I would think you're in, up to your knees in it. No, ask the farmers. Third, identify the freshest choices. Now, even at the farmer's market, some items can be fresher than others. And what that means to you is more flavor. It also means more time in your refrigerator that you have before it spoils. Now, you go to the farmer's market, you can't eat a week's worth of food in one day. So you have stuff that's gonna go on. Like if I buy hardier things like Brussels sprouts or something, I'm gonna push them back in the week cause they'll be just fine. The things that may go bad more quickly, some of my greens and things like that, uh, I'm gonna wanna eat earlier in the week. But one of the main things to do is to consider how an item grows. Look at that item and, and ask the farmer if you're not sure. Does it grow on a tree? Does it grow in a bush? Does it grow from the ground? And as soon as you know how the item grows, you can see how it draws water up into itself. So if you see bent over asparagus, you, you know that it's drying out. But if you stand the asparagi, asparagi up in a, a glass of water, they will, like, like flowers, right? Lettuce does this, broccoli does this. Most things that are used to soaking up water will do this and they'll do it in your refrigerator. Uh, speaking of which, if the broccoli heads are mushy, you know, you touch the florets and they're mushy, that means they're drying out. They're no longer soaking up water. Any stocky brown ends, uh, shake your peppers. I'll tell you why soon. Um, uh, I'll tell you now, as a matter of fact, older peppers, the seeds come loose. If you shake them and it's like a maracas, don't pick that one. Uh, the other thing is proper storage. When you spend all this time and money getting the, the freshest food possible, you, when you get home, you want to protect your investment in food. Um, if I were a painter or a guitarist, if I was a pianist, I wouldn't leave my piano in the backyard in the rain. I, I would take care of it. I would respect it. And it's the same thing with your lettuces and your asparagus, gusses, whatever, when you come home. Then when you start to be really skilled with cooking methods, you start matching the method for the food that you bought. And when you match the correct method to the food that you bought, you're really highlighting the natural flavor of the food there, right? So we, we I won't dive too deeply into it. There are basically 13 cooking methods, maybe nine that you can apply to fresh stuff from the farmer's market, eh, maybe 10 or more. Uh, but mismatching those ingredients, I'll give you an example. I, I don't know, you buy a big round roast and you put it on the grill. 
too thick to grill, you need a cooking method. You've heard me say this before. So there's a skill in finding the freshest, protecting it in storage, and then matching it with the right cooking method. But oh, okay, some of these might be a learning curve here. You might have to get a little courage up to talk to the farmer. It might be hard for you to talk to people. It, it's probably hard for farmers to, to, to talk to people. I think they spend a lot of time alone in the field. So uh, maybe shopping without a shopping list might be scary to you. This is shopping without a net, you know? Sure. So it's not immediately apparent to everyone which item is the freshest in the market or how to store it so it lasts longer or even the best method to match it with. But luckily, these are all things that can be learned. And as a culinary educator, I would be really excited to help you with that. that. That's what I'm here for. And that's why we have things like today, Tuesday at noon, the Carefree Cooks Code, so everyone who wants to enjoy great food and cooking can have the information that helps them most. Look, on Tuesday, I could cook asparagus, I could cook a bunch of asparagus, and you could just watch me do it. Or we could talk about how to find the freshest and retain the value. That's what Tuesdays are about. It's pretty much why I've done everything I've done for the past 12 years or so. Because I want to share my great pride, my freedom with everyone everywhere. Because once you start your journey toward carefree cooking, once you start to gather all these skills, then you can enjoy all the benefits of good local food. And what I call it is food migration. Not that the food flies south for the winter, you know, some food does, but it's, it's like the technology migration. Do you know what tech migration is? It's sim food migration, tech migration, right? You do. You, kn you know what tech migration is, and I'm going to prove it to you. You might not have heard the words, but let's see how far back we can go in your memory. Uh, did you own 45 RPM records? Where are they now? They, they don't plug into your iPod very well. I know that. Um, when you were done with your, oh, if you're saying to me, gee, I can't remember if I know what 45 records are, did you own one of those things? Yeah. So if you owned like a drawer full or like a bag of a hundred of them, <laughs> you know what 45 RPM records are. But then at some point, did you replace them with eight track tapes? Pretty cool when you could push the button and go to the next track. But eventually, along comes the cassette tape, technology migration. And all those cassette tapes, they all wound up in the bin when CDs were introduced. More tech migration. Now, you don't even need anything tangible. You just download the file and put it on your phone. It's tech migration. So if you, if you apply this concept to your carefree cooking journey, you could have the same migration. TV dinners from the 1970s have turned into microwave dinners. Notice it's no longer fried chicken. It is poulet frite <laughs> in the microwave. It's poulet frite. Food has gotten simpler. Food has gotten lazier. Food has gotten worse. Plain and simple. Our food is worse than our ancestors are. And you know why this is? This, the food has been dumbed down to accommodate for people that don't know how to cook. Oh my goodness, we have things like pre-cooked and frozen rice. I mean, this is beyond the pale to me. If you can't cook rice, whew, I want to teach you how, <laughs> simply. But look, in an effort to avoid real food, in an effort to walk around cooking skills, the current food migration has given you worse food, not better food. From 45 RPM records to your iPhone is a tremendous improvement. But in the food migration that's going on, it's like going from CDs to 45 RPM records. But look, the good news here is you don't ever need pre-cooked frozen white rice because if you know how to cook, it changes the game. It changes everything. And if you start shopping at the farmer's market, your food migration is going forward now instead of backward. You're going to start to buy whole ingredients instead of portioned ones. You're going to buy wholesome food instead of bottled ones or condiments. You're going to start making things in your own kitchen instead of buying them from someone else's. And your microwave oven, 
for this kind of crazy stuff, it should be relegated to heating up water, which is pretty much all the microwave is good for. So once you've started a positive migration of your food, it's got to start at the farmer's market. And I love shopping at the farmer's market for a whole bunch of reasons. And I'm going to give you the 11 facts that prove why farmer's market shopping is better. Number one, it just tastes better. If you like food, if you're a fan of food, if you're a fan of good food, this is where you get it. Plain and simple. I mean, it's a shame that so many people have dumbed down their taste buds with processed, frozen, convenience items that were never fresh. But when you get the full flavor, food, the enjoyment, it's one of the greatest parts of being alive. Seriously, for me, good food, bright colors, brilliant eye appeal, it all heightens your cooking and eating experience. And if you combine that real flavor of a local strawberry, a local peach, chicken, or even lettuce, you will have greater enjoyment of food. You'll start to notice it instead of letting it go right by you. And lettuce, by the way, lettuce has flavor. If you've been eating iceberg lettuce from the grocery store your whole life, go find some lettuce with flavor. I have this argument with people all the time. And it's no wonder people tell me, they go, no, lettuce doesn't have flavor. What kind of lettuce do you eat? Iceberg from the grocery store? Sure, your lettuce doesn't have flavor. Nonetheless, the great thing about the farmer's market is that you can live in the moment. It's serendipity. You live for the season. They won't have everything all the time at the farmer's market, but that's okay. It's okay with me. You don't get your birthday every day of the year. You don't get Christmas every day of the year. I don't get strawberries every day of the year. When it's strawberries, I go buy as many as I can. When they're gone, they're gone. But luckily the next few weeks, it's blueberry season on the East Coast, so that's cool. There's a connection a connection that you experience with nature when you eat only what's fresh, local, and available. And anything else is really ridiculous to someone who knows about really good food. Uh, the third thing is farmers are working hard for you. I have great empathy for them. They work hard to supply excellent food, not cheap machine food, right? I want to support them with my money. And most often, these people at the local farmer's market, they're, they're multi-generational farmers. They have a deep sense of pride in what they do. And trust me, they're not getting rich. I don't know any rich farmers, but they lead richer lives. And you get to help them with that. There have been studies done. If you spend $100 at your farmer's market, 62 of the $100 goes back into the local economy. And 99 out of $100 stays within your state. But if you spend your $100 at the huge warehouse mega store, only $25 stays local. So where do you want your money to go? Who do you want to help? The other great thing about the farmer's market, it's good for the earth. Uh, food in the U.S. travels about 1,500 miles on average to get to your plate. 1,500 miles is a lot of fuel and gasoline, jet fuel, Trains, well, however, shipping food creates a lot of waste. And it's often, the food is often treated, waxed, gassed to help lessen the effect of spoilage on this huge transit. But your local farmer, the guy that loves the land and supports their family, they don't, they don't have a gassing machine. They just don't own one. Corporate farms are polluting. Corporate farms are deleting lands. Corporate farms are using inordinate amount of resources to make your food dumber and cheaper. It's not a good deal for us. Also, the food's just plain old better for you. When the food is harvested before it's fully ripe, it has less nutrients than when it's allowed to ripen on the plant. And if you're gonna ship your food 1,500 miles, like I said, it's gotta be picked way before ripe to avoid the spoilage. And much of the mega mart food stores, it's highly processed. It's grown with pesticides or antibiotics or hormones, a better way to make it look good and sell it. Buy ugly food from your local market. It will taste better than the pretty food from the mega market. Uh, there is a serendipity in shopping at the farmer's market. It's finding something new. Hey, cool, what is this? What? How do you cook it? What, why, this is a different kind of tomato? What is it? Again, the grocery store sells what sells. They're, they're, they're there to move stuff. The farmer sells what grows. And I love going to the farmer's market and seeing what's new every week. 
asking the farmer about it, using it in my cooking. My meals, they're never dull when I keep a wide variety of fresh, seasonal, wholesome foods at my table. Uh, I'm an animal lover, uh, but I got a real hard time with this. Look, I, I can't even listen to stories about the mistreatment of animals, but I'm a carnivore. You know, and I know what a huge contradiction is, this is. And uh, I guess I'm not enough of an animal lover to stop eating some of them. Um, I've, I've got to reconcile this in my own head. But if the chickens, the cows, the pigs are raised humanely, not in a factory farm, in sanitary conditions, they're treated well, like my friend Tweety in Hawaii says, they really only have one bad day. Uh, there's a sense of eating your own dirt. My friend Pascal uh, at the Le Epicure Fine in, in Paris, he taught me this concept. Not literally eating your own dirt, but there are minerals, there are nutrients endemic to where you live that gives you the characteristics of your local food. And I believe there's great credibility in the idea that the food from your earth has the minerals, has the antibodies necessary to keep you healthy in your earth, in that place. And knowing where your food comes from, the source of the food is becoming increasingly important with the potential of food safety hazards, global shipping, things like that. Uh, it, when you get fresh food, the cooking is easier. Uh, ripe foods cook m more easily than unripe ones. Try and make a tomato sauce with tomatoes that are white in the middle of it. It, it just really doesn't work out. Plus it's a lot more fun. Uh, you know, when I used to vacation in Hawaii, I would cook dinner almost every night of the week because of the inspiring ingredients that I would find there. And most people would ask me, like, why, as a chef, wouldn't you go on vacation from cooking? Why would you cook on vacation? Well, I always said it's like a violinist, you know, finding the, 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 the Stradivarius, you know, a Steinway piano for the pianist. I find the freshest ingredients there and they're the easiest to cook. They're the most nutritious. Uh, you can also make going to the farmer's market a family event. It's not very exciting to push the metal cart around the grocery store and the bad fluorescent lighting, but the farmer's market is where people like you, people who care about food, congregate, meet your neighbors. Again, talk to the farmers, enjoy the outdoors instead of the fluorescent lighting, bring your family with you and teach your kids about fresh food and where the food comes from. The farmer's market makes shopping more of like an exciting treasure hunt. And it really takes a lot more thought and involvement than just wheeling around the grocery store. Uh, last one, you avoid plastics and packaging. If this is important to you, think about how much packaging goes into the grocery store. My goodness, the lettuce is in a plastic bag. The fruit is bound in mesh. The broccoli is on a styrofoam tray and wrapped in plastic. Go to the farmer's market, bring your reusable bags, place your fresh ingredients directly into them, and you'll be saving the landfills as well. Look, it all comes down to having a love of great food and never-ending journey of discovering new foods, new ways to cook them, new ways to be proud of what you've cooked, and you discover all these things at your local farmer's market or farm stand. The farmer's market... It just makes the whole process. You talk about from farm to table. We're not talking about factory farm and jet airline to table. You're talking about knowing and teaching your children and your grandchildren every step of the way what the food goes through until they eat it. It's a tremendous lesson that they will never, ever, ever forget. Look, <laughs> if I love music as much as, if I love music as much as food, which I had to stop and think about that, um, I guess I love them equally. And again, I mean, if I were a musician instead of a chef, would I buy the cheapest instrument? Would I get the cheapest strings? Would I play the shortest version, the shortest shortcut of the song? No, if I were a musician, I would love everything about playing music. Choosing my guitar, choosing my strings, the way I make the chords. The, it's just, it's a way to express yourself through your art and music or food and cooking, and it, nutri it is nutritious for your family as well. Uh, let's take a quick look into the Carefree Cooks community, see how many of our cooks are using their fresh local ingredients this week. Who do we got? Oh, Patricia, this is really interesting. Uh, Patricia started with fresh eggplant, sliced it, roasted it, 
added a caramelized tats- uh, tahini, caramelized tahini, and then a cucumber yogurt sauce, which is tatsiki, tatsiki and tahini. Um, and she said she doesn't even really like eggplant, <laughs> right? Right? Or what she said was she didn't, she didn't like eggplant. Now, with a little bit of creativity, some confidence and methods, some fresh ingredients, uh, uh, Patricia said she wanted to lick the plate over something that she didn't like normally, right? How cool, fresh ingredients, dependable methods. And I also know there is a very happy queen uh, uh, somewhere because John John's cooking gets better and better and better. It's remarkable what this guy posts in our private community here. He's grilled and smoked a yellowtail snapper with a parsnips and potato mash, and he does it all for the love of his queen. I, I hear you, I, I do the same thing. Uh, Michael stopped buying dinner rolls this year because he found out about the 10 step yeast dough production method and he's using my 18, 10 and two formula, making his own rolls for the holiday meal. Super fresh, 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 fresh rolls, right? Uh, Roberta, Roberta said she loved my sauces class from last Saturday. Did you see that? That class was already 55 minutes long and it could have been, it could have been like four hours if you saw the finished product, but I made a basic tomato sauce and then I made three adjuncts that you add to it to make three different sauces. Go back and see that class Saturday. Anyway, Roberta watched it, right? So she saw it as an inspiration for this really outstanding tortellini dish. She sauteed leeks, portobello mushroom and garlic, deglazed with marsala wine, uh, added a chicken velote. That's some serious chef stuff there, you know? Velote, marsala wine, saute. Nicely done, Roberta. Really good. Uh, hey, how about some comfort food? Everybody loves that. Gnocchi and meatballs with marinara. Entirely made by Mary's hands. Mary made the gnocchi. Mary made the meatballs. Mary made the, the sauce. And it's way better than anything she's ever bought in a store, she said. Nicely done. This is what goes on in our Carefree Cooks community. People suddenly learn how to make pasta and they go nuts. People suddenly learn how to do something. You don't need to learn everything. You only need to learn one thing and then you're dying to learn everything else. That's the way it works. Look, if your farmer's market is open this weekend, get down there, like see what's happening. Start start checking it out and start making it a weekly food habit. Uh, back to the true or false today, peaches continue to ripen after they're picked. Okay, it depends on how you define ripen. So we're going to call this true-ish, okay? You can ripen peaches and nectarines, the kind of stone tree fruit, in like a brown paper bag, and they get softer, especially if you put like an apple or a banana in there. The ethylene gas will make them softer to the touch, but they don't get any sweeter. And here would be my argument. If you say just that the fruit gets softer, it's riper, okay, then you can ripen them. But if you say fruit gets sweeter as it ripens, which I believe is the right definition, then the answer is really false because unlike apples and pears, nectarines and peaches, the sugar content does not improve once they're picked. You pick that kind of stone fruit off the tree, they don't get any sweeter. Apples do, pears do, uh, pineapples do. There's a lot of food that do, but they don't get sweeter. So depends what you call ripe. It was really kind of a trick question. I'm sorry. So everybody's right today. 10,000 points for everybody. Um, that's why it's important to get local fruit that's picked at ripeness, not before. Uh, look, if you know somebody that could use some outdoor time <laughs> selecting the freshest and healthiest foods that make your cooking easier, more nutritious, more fun, please like, love, share this video with them so they can get out of the house and start enjoying selecting their own food. And if you'd like to know the five simple steps that I use in my own home to keep delicious, nutritious food on the menu, along with how to avoid the top three mistakes that everyone makes when selecting fresh ingredients, you need to check out my free class this week, how to choose the freshest items from the market, how to protect your investment from spoilage, how to use herbs and spices to create flavor profiles, all covered in my class. It's webcookingclasses.com slash seasonal and take the free class, how to use fresh seasonal ingredients to create fast, nutritious meals in five simple steps. You got to you simply must register for it. Uh, this is the one that'll get you ready for the fresh food season, right? All you have to do is go to webcookingclasses.com slash seasonal. Thanks for being with me again on a Tuesday, everyone. Until next Tuesday, when we take even more steps toward cracking the Carefree Cooks Code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your freshest 
cooking success. Bye, everyone.